Split One Genesis Writer here with Genesis Thoughts episode number four. Today I'll be going over my thoughts on Bungie's Destiny beta, which I got to play in. Um, and it was uh, definitely a cool experience. It's like the third beta I've played in. I played in the Halo Reach beta, uh, played in a few other betas before, and um, this was definitely a cool experience. But I want to give you guys my thoughts on the game in general and just where I'm coming from as a Halo player. Uh, moving over to Destiny and trying it out. Oh yeah, I played the Titanfall beta as well. I uh, was pretty impressed with that as well, but um, I want to give you guys my thought. It is uh, visually impressive. I will have to say that. For a beta, the game was rather polished. Um, it was not like there was no glitches or anything, but um, for the scope that the game was trying to achieve, specifically in the player versus enemy part of the game, or PvE, which is oftentimes people abbreviate or shorten it to that, the scope that the game was trying to achieve was quite incredible. It wasn't quite like Skyrim where you can go to any place that you can see, but to be honest, there were there was a staggering amount in each level, and we got to only play really on one planet with six missions um, from, what I can, from what I played so far, and it was just really big. Um, contrary to what some people may believe, um, out of those six missions, you are um, given five where you have to go on a specific objective or quest. But in one of the missions, it's an exploration mode where you can go throughout the entire level or the entire level that's open to you and explore it all while doing many side missions or public events. And this is really cool because you can essentially run around and screw around with your friends on any part of the map that you choose, including some of the areas where it has extremely high level enemies. And this is where Destiny really shines, I feel like, in the PvE or player versus enemy. Because essentially you can go in with three people, but your squad of three, and I know squad doesn't necessarily mean three, but I'll, I'll call it three people as a squad in reference to Destiny. Um, when you go around on this huge map and interact and find other people fighting a, a huge battle against something, um, those are some of the best experiences that I've had in the Destiny beta and just playing Destiny overall is when you're all working together to fight this really big bad guy. Um, just giving you a brief experience, there was, was a one public event where we ran into a uh, level 11 enemy that for some reason was super, super difficult or it had a huge amount of health. And the objective was to stop this one enemy guy from getting through four checkpoints and basically little holograms on the ground that he would step on and it would pass an objective. But we would try to get him from going through four, but on the fourth one he would disappear. And I've actually never, I never got three gold, uh, three gold tier star rating. I, we never stopped him. Um, we actually got him to the very, very last bit of his health and were meleeing the crud out of him. We had six people all meleeing him at the same time, right before he entered the final um, objective and we almost stopped him but it was a really cool experience we didn't stop him but it, it was it, I can see where the player versus enemy part of the game and that co-op experience of going through and grinding through enemies for gear and for weapons is really cool something that I should definitely mention here is that in player versus enemy the storyline was pretty limited in the beta so I really wasn't able to see where everything was going in terms of storyline. However, the few hints that they did give and this, this sheer scope of the lore that you could experience in the game, while it was somewhat limited in the beta, it touched on several notes that I feel could be capitalized heavily on. The visual and everything in the art design and the level leveling and the armor and gear is there to support a very good storyline. And from what I can tell, it seems like while they're not going super heavily in depth into the like history of everything, about everything that happened, um, and going like as deep into the storyline as Halo could get at some points, um, it feels like you're affecting a realistic and changing world. It feels like there is a legitimate conflict, you're a legitimate hero, and that you're making an impact on the world and it's it's a it's not as cheesy a feeling 
um, as let's say going through a scripted exper single player experience and trekking through a world it does feel like and simulate that you have choice on where you go and what you do and while some you know side missions can get a little repetitive at times I feel that overall the story takes a very interesting path and in that it's not super in-depth and detailed as you go along and as you play the game you discover more there weren't like huge extensive cutscenes although there were some cool pretty cool cutscenes um, there weren't like a whole lot of them and that's the main way they told you the story and nothing else no there are many unique ways of them telling the story and I like that and I, I think that has potential in the PvE aspect part of the game the transferring into the multiplayer, specifically the player versus player multiplayer, um, or PvP as uh, they would like to put it, is where things get a little bit strange and rusty. Um, I'm mainly saying that, having come over from Halo, obviously, the game really seems to cater to a casual audience, not necessarily a competitive audience. Um, the main way I feel like it does this is not only by allowing you to select any weapon you want in your loadout and by being able to change that loadout whenever you want throughout the game to have a sniper rifle or a high level shotgun or whatever you want to do um, but on top of that you have supers which are essentially from what I could tell there were abilities yes specific to each of the three classes hunter titan and warlock that you can choose but they're essentially um, area, huge area based um, huge width high damage power up explosions essentially uh, now I know that's really kind of limiting the perspective of what the ability is, but everyone gets a super eventually during the game. You will eventually run into someone who has a super, and while you can kill someone who has their super, um, or kill them before they activate it and throw it at you, the devastation of the super and the fact that it covers such a wide area and instantaneously kills players, um, if you happen to hit them at all with it, it feels like, uh, means that, especially in game modes like Control, where you have to capture certain territories during the beta during the beta that was the only game mode you could play while I understand that control focuses down um, attack points so that Bungie can um, look at stats more easily because there's you know more focused areas of attack and players killing each other instead of a slayer mode where a map might be, be really big and players don't find each other as easily I assume they chose the control game mode so that players would find each other more easily in the beta but I'm not impressed with how the player versus player flowed in control, specifically due to the fact that when you were defending or capturing a control zone or point, being supered was a very, very likely possibility. And the fact that you could have shotguns and um, pulse rifles is just kind of a little bit ridiculous. Now, I would like to say that I was much more impressed with the Iron Banner playlist, which is only available during temporary periods of the beta, where essentially you would go into multiplayer and all of your stats and gear and weapons, their their stats would actually matter in multiplayer. This is one of the more confusing points that I feel needs to be clarified in the beta, is which playlists actually take the stats from your weapons and armor and apply it to the multiplayer game, and that actually matters, versus the playlist that it doesn't matter. I feel like um, there needs to be a playlist that ha not only doesn't have radar, okay, but also doesn't allow any of your gear to matter whatsoever. In other words, you're, you everyone has the same armor rating or defense rating. And um, I feel it should be one playlist and that it should be Slayer and yeah. Um, I also would like to see more symmetrical maps. Um, I'm just going to touch on this once again briefly because it's popped up in my head again. Again, Destiny is visually stunning. It is a much better, much better than Borderlands in this aspect. And even the um, running around in the PvE. I feel like the PvE aspect, having not played Borderlands, but having seen other people play Borderlands, I think it yeah, the Destiny is less cluttered, more user-intuitive, and overall a more distinct and long-lasting game than uh, Borderlands will turn out to be. It's also a more serious game, has a more serious storyline, and so from that standpoint, I just think the PvE really rocks. But back to the PvP uh, multiplayer, and I don't want to harp on PvP too much, guys. I just want to give you guys my honest opinion. Uh, my honest opinion is that 
I will be playing the Iron Banner or the playlist that actually allows your gear to matter in the playlist. Here's the reason why I say that. I have always been fascinated by the idea that playing single player and grinding out good gear and good weapons then carries over into the multiplayer. I think that's really cool. It's one of the reasons why I didn't play Halo 4 Spartan Ops for very long, um, or I did play Halo 4 Spartan Ops long at the beginning, was because the experience carried over into your multiplayer rank. So I like the idea of being able to casually sit back with your friends, play and grind through a bunch of single player stuff, and then have that gear and stats transfer into multiplayer. I like the idea of testing out your weapons and gear in player versus enemy or player versus computer enemies before you go into multiplayer, um, before you get dominated, essentially. I really like that idea. I feel like it provides this nice balance and distinctiveness. And one of the things about the des Destiny that I really like is the fluidity inside the menus. It is really, really well done. The fact that you can go up to any player in the game and just, just interact with them and view all their stats and view the, all their gear currently equipped to their character and how much they have upgraded a weapon or anything. You can see exactly what item they're using. That is cool. Okay, The fact that it visually transitions you from, from um, the tower and your ship goes into orbit and people join you in orbit so you can visually see who's in your lobby that is something that needs to happen in more games. Um, that fluidity where it's not just a name that pops up on the side of your screen. It, it, there's very distinct visual icons that ex explain contextually inside the world things that happen, like a player joining your game. That is very, very innovative and very, very cool. And I know other games are trying to do that, but um, specifically the mouse the mouse version of the UI, which if you've played the Destiny beta, you know what I mean. It's the way you select various buttons on the contextual menu. It's close to flawless. It's very, very, very intuitive. It reminds me of using um, an iPhone for the first time with a touch screen. It just, it works. I can't explain it. Um, it to, to, be put it to put it honest, it's magic. It really, really works well. And I don't understand why other people don't do it. Um, it, it's so much easier to see an icon that you're moving on the screen and selecting various things instead of just going up or going down and having a selector highlight various items on your screen. Instead, you're able to move to the item, you know, horizontally, ho horizontally or vertically or diagonally, in instantly across the screen to where you want to be. I'm sorry, going over that so much, but just that alone is very polished, I feel like. Um, I just feel like the PvP is definitely geared towards a more casual audience because you can, it's essentially like Call of Duty in that you can have anything in your class. And I don't feel that playlists that are going to come out that might have no radar and everyone has the same loadout and all that, I don't feel that playlists that come out like that are going to be super competitive because I don't see the map design being super symmetrical. I just don't see it. Um, I also see, you know, this tendency that, okay, you know, everyone gets points sort of deal. For example, in the control game type, not only do your kills matter towards the score, but also controlling zones matter. And it was a little bit confusing how much both of those truly mattered. Um, it's, it's confusing how much the metal score, or essentially your points, uh, go into the score versus what you're personally getting for your character. Um, and that's something that other people may be more clear on than I am, obviously, but it's just something that I feel like needs to be clarified a little more. Overall, I think the best in Destiny Beta is doing the right thing. I think the user support and what I've seen on Twitter what I've seen on the website and what I've seen Bungie trying to do with this new type of game, um, and it is a new type of game, it really does seem to push forward things in a very interesting way. Um, I feel like Destiny has something for everyone. It, it's a first-person shooter that's hopefully uh, geared towards um, even younger ages that players can come in and experience and have fun 
not necessarily just in a competitive multiplayer setting, but also in um, a player versus enemy setting. Um, and that's commendable, to be honest. Um, the way in which all these pieces interact into a whole game, and I was only able to explore one planet in the beta, you know, Earth. And it's it's amazing to me, mind-bogglingly, mind-boggling me, how many planets will probably have in the actual game, and even extended by DLC. I can see myself putting a lot of casual time into the game and popping in the player versus player whenever I feel like it, or whenever I have a good lobby, or whenever I want to. You know, I know some people will really grind through player versus player. That's not necessarily something I want to be doing. So, um. And the main reason for that is I don't feel it's super competitive. I don't, you know, I'll try in the games, obviously, but in a game where you could come around the corner and someone could have a shotgun and you have a sniper rifle and they just destroy you, it it's it's really not as competitive as it could be, especially with the movement radar where any movement on your radar is detected from a pretty lengthy distance away. It allows you to see where players are immediately. Um, and with the player death cam showing you where players are um, after they kill you and through walls, you can see where they are um, during the death cam. There's so many little things like that that just indicate a more casual level of gameplay. And while it's not completely overdone and ridiculous like Halo 4's ordnance system, um, it is more like, for example, with the heavy ammo, it is a call down on the map. that You have to control an area of the map to get the heavy ammo. You still can load out with very powerful one-shot kill uh, weapons um, from the get-go, which I just don't think should be in a multiplayer game unless everyone has a one-shot kill weapon in the game, like you're all playing snipers or something like that. But that's my opinion. Um, again, the map design is more asymmetrical, not the same on both sides. It's beautiful design, but it's not the same on both sides symmetrical. So that's my opinion on all that. I think feel like I'm, I've reached sort of the end of my thoughts on this topic from what I can tell. I'll make another Destiny Thoughts video if you guys want me to, or if I have more thoughts on Destiny as a whole. Definitely we'll be playing it and getting um, the limited edition, not the ghost edition. The limited edition comes with everything that the ghost edition does except for the little ghost prop, and it's $50 more for that. So I'm just going to be pre-ordering the limited edition um, from GameStop and uh, playing that when it comes out. And I, I'm, I'm pretty excited to play it. Um, more as a casual game than a competitive game, and I'm looking forward to having fun in the game. To be honest, like I don't, I I uh, am very serious about playing games, so I hope to be um, just having some casual fun playing this game, and that looks like to me what it's going to provide. And props to Bungie for providing that. I think some people can feel a little jarred because Bungie had some really good roots and some pretty competitive multiplayer in their early days, and um, I just think Bungie is going in the right direction when it comes to popularity. Uh, another thing I will mention is because it's on four or five different platforms, I hope that the player base isn't spread out too much. But from what I can tell and the audience that Bungie is trying to pursue, I don't really think that's going to be an issue. I think a lot of players are going to stick with this game for a long time to grind out the levels and gear. And because there are three classes you can choose from, there's a lot of time you can sink into this game. And so with add-on content and events happening every once in a while. It's just always something you can come back to and have a lot of fun in. But guys, that's my final wrap-up thoughts for the Destiny Beta and where I think this game is going. If you guys want to see gameplay from the Destiny Beta, I'm, I'm hesitant to upload this kind of thing because I'm not sure if you guys want it. I know this is mainly channel-centered around Halo. So if you guys want that and you guys um, feel that that's something you want to see, maybe my first few um, impress, you know, gameplay moments from the game or um, maybe full gameplay from multiplayer, whatever you guys want to see, please comment down below just what you'd like to see. Maybe a walkthrough of the tower, you know, or something of that nature. Walkthrough of character creation and what you can do. Let me know in the comments below and I can very easily make a video about this. But guys, thank you for watching this video. And I'll see you in the next Genesis Thoughts video or whatever I capture or record. Peace.